हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन यूनिट ट्वेंटी वन सर्वे डिजाइन एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग आवर टॉपिक सैम्पलिंग डिजाइन एंड सब टॉपिक इज प्रोबेबिलिटी सैम्पलिंग डिजाइन प्रोबेबिलिटी सैम्पलिंग प्रोवाइड्स अ स्ट्रेटिकल बेसिस फॉर स्टेटिंग दैट अ सैम्पल इज रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ द टारगेट पॉपुलेशन इन प्रोबेबिलिटी सैम्पल एवरी एलिमेंट इन द पॉपुलेशन हैज अ नोन चांस ऑफ बींग इंक्लूडेड इन द सैम्पल दैट मीन्स एवरी मेंबर ऑफ द टारगेट पॉपुलेशन हैज अ नोन जीरो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ बींग इंक्लूडेड इन द स्टडी और सैम्पल this allows for estimates of the accuracy of sample findings in approximating what we would find out if we had conducted a census of the total population the second one is non probability sampling design in non probability sampling designs we do not know whether an element of the population has an equal chance of being selected its probability of selection cannot be determined as is that with probability sampling which where each element has a 50% chance of being selected and 50% chance of not being included in the sample the non probability sampling are drawn based on judgment regarding the characteristics of the target population and the needs of survey with non probability sampling some members of the eligible target population have a chance of being chosen and others do not thus the statistical estimates of precision can not be made with this sample the non probability sampling designs are preferred when there is no possibility of probability sampling whenever feasible probability sampling designs are preferred now let us move to the point probability sampling procedures the first is simple random sampling in simple random sampling each members of the population under study has an equal chance of being selected the method involves selecting at random from a list of the population or a sampling frame the required number of subjects for the sample because of the probability and chance the sample should contain subjects with characteristics similar to the population as a whole for example some old some young some tall some short some rich some poor etc one essential requisite for this kind of sampling is that a complete list of population or sampling frame is needed the biggest advantage of a simple random sampling is that a researcher can get an unbiased sample without much technical difficulty for instance once a member or element is selected he or it is not eligible for a second chance and is not returned to the pool this is what makes a simple random sampling relatively unbiased the typical ways of selecting a simple random sample are mainly through a lottery or through a table of random numbers or now through computer generated random numbers the lottery method is adopted for smaller population or sampling frame for bigger sampling frame the computer generated numbers are selected it may be kept in mind that the simple random sampling may not guarantee a perfect representation of the population 
In other words, it may be wise to say that most random samples are close to the population most of the time, but may not perfectly match the entire population. Now let us move to the second systematic sampling. This is a modified version of simple random sampling. It involves selecting cases, elements from a population list in a systematic rather than random fashion. Here the researcher calculates a sampling interval rather than using a list of random numbers. The interval becomes his quasi-random selection method. Thus, in a systematic sample, every nth number has a chance to be included in the sample. For instance, if we are to select 10 cases out of a total of 100, every tenth will have a chance to be selected. In case n is any number between 1 and 10, thus the starting point in the systematic sampling is chosen at random. In most cases, a simple random sample and a systematic sample yield virtually equivalent results. One important situation in which systematic sampling cannot be substituted for simple random sampling occurs when the elements in a simple sample are organized in a cycle or pattern. For example, if sampling is organized of married couples with the male first and female second, such a pattern gives the researcher an unrepresentative sample if a systematic sample is used, his systematic sample can be non-representative and include only wives or only husbands, depending upon the manner in which cases are organized or patterns. The third one is stratified sampling. Stratified sampling involves dividing the population into homogeneous groups or subgroups or strata, each group containing group subjects with similar characteristics. For example, in the earlier example, group A might contain only males and group B only females. After dividing the population into strata, or subgroups, the researcher draws either a sim simple random sample or systematic sample or both from each of the subgroups. How does one decide on subgroups? The strata or subgroups are chosen because evidence is available that they are related to the outcome. The justification for the selection of the strata can come from literature and expert opinion. In stratified sampling, the researcher controls the relevant size of each stratum rather than letting random processes control it. This guarantees representation of different strata within a sample. However, one condition is that the stratified sampling procedures produce samples that are more representative of the population than simple random sample or systematic sample if the stratum information is accurate. The next one is cluster sampling. The most widely employed probability sampling design in survey research is cluster sampling. It addresses two problems. First is lack of good sampling frame and second the cost involved in reaching a sampled element or a case. For example, there is no single list of undergraduates in college of a city. 
even if one gets an accurate sampling frame it would cost too much to reach many of the undergraduates as the colleges are spread out geographically in the city in this case instead of using a single sampling frame researchers use a sampling design that involves clusters in this case the cluster will be the college a cluster is a naturally occurring unit for example a school which has many classrooms students teachers a city with zones namely each west south central north etc states etc the clusters are selected randomly and all members of the selected clusters are included in the sample or sample random or systematic or stratified samples are taken out of each cluster cluster sampling is used in large surveys it differs from stratified sampling in that with cluster sampling one starts with a naturally occurring constituency the researcher selects from among the clusters and either surveys all members of the selection or randomly selected from among them the resulting sample may not be representative of areas not covered by the cluster nor does one cluster necessarily represent another now let us wind up the session and take rest thank you very much for engaging yourself with the self learning podcast